Hello, welcome back to our study on the seven seals. I want to say that it has been a good series so far. We have gone through five of the seven seals. Um, today we will be starting the sixth seal. And I have entitled this study on the sixth seal, Shock and Awe. Because I'm sure some persons will be shocked by the information um, that will be presented under this six seal study. But before we get into our presentation, um, let us pray. Most kind, righteous, turn our Father and our God, but as we are about to dive into this word, give us clear insights, give us eyesight. And Father, whatever we have learned, that it will go forward to the pump to the development of our faith in your words. Be with us in a mock way. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen and amen. Now, the sixth seal is found in Revelation 6, right, verse 12 and verse 13. And this is what it says. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of air, and the moon became as blood. Right, that's verse 12. Verse 13 states, And the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree casted her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. So, that's the sixth year, in a nutshell. Revelation 6, 12, and 13. Let's continue. There are other scriptures that talk about the events that take place in the sixth seal. And these other scriptures are 1. Matthew 24, verse 29. Right, Matthew 24, we know, right, is Jesus talking to his disciples upon the Mount of Olives. And in Matthew 24, verse 29, Jesus Christ described the same events mentioned in the sixth seal in Revelation 6, verse 12 to 13. Mark 13, 24 to 26 also gives the same account of Jesus Christ talking to his disciples upon the Mount of Olives. But Mark 13, 24 to 26 let us know that after the papal persecution mentioned, in the last two studies on the seal, then there would have come right the events of the sixth seal. Now the time of papal persecution goes from 538 AD to 1798 AD. Coming down to the close of the 1260 years, right? This is after these times that the events of the sixth seal would have taken place according to Mark. 24 to verse 26. Now, Joel 2, verse 30, and we know Joel, right, is a Old Testament prophet. And Joel had prophesied about the events that would take place under the sixth seal. Acts 2, verse 20, right, Peter in his sermon. On the day of Pentecost, he reiterated that these things would take place in the last days. So this is letting us know, Acts 2 is letting us know that the sixth seal, right, is going to be open in the last days, right, just before Jesus Christ comes again. And that's exactly what Matthew 24 verse 29 and verse 30 also let us know. Now, we want to go back to what we read in Revelation 6, 12, and 13, and we're going to break it into parts. We have just read through the entire um, sixth seal, but now we're going to put the sixth seal in its proper order. Now, the first thing we see in Revelation 6, 12 was that there was supposed to be a great earthquake. Right, so the great earthquake was supposed to be the first thing. Then 
the sun would be darkened. That would be the next event according to the sixth seal. After that, the moon would have turned into blood. And then the last thing that the sixth seal tells us is that the stars will fall from heaven. Right, all of these, right now we're going to look at how these things right, were fulfilled. First, we're going to look at the great earthquake. And going forward in this presentation, right, I'll be covering a lot of information. We'll be quoting from historical sources just to show that what the Bible says and what history says right, is in alignment. Right now, the great earthquake in question mentioned in the sixth seal is the great earthquake of 1755. The great earthquake of what year? 1755. 1755 is close enough to 1798, the date on which the papal persecution was brought to an end. Right, so just like how the scripture had prophesied, just like how Christ had prophesied, at the ending of the tribulation, the persecution of the church, then the sixth seal, earthquake, and all those things would be coming to fruition. Now, I'm going to be reading from the Encyclopedia Britannica, talking about this great earthquake of 1755 that the Bible had prophesied to take place. The Lisbon earthquake of 1755, a series of earthquakes that occurred on the morning of November 1st, 1755, causing serious damage to the port city of Lisbon port, which is today Portugal, and killing an estimate 60,000 people in Lisbon alone. Violent shaking demolished large public buildings and about 12,000 dwellings. Because November 1st is All Saints Day, a large part of the population was attending Mass at the moment the earthquake struck. The churches unable to withstand the seismic shock collapsed, killing or injuring thousands of worshippers. Modern research indicates that the main seismic source was faulting of the seafloor along the tectonic plate. Boundaries of the mid-Atlantic, the earthquake generated a tsunami that produced waves about 20 feet, which is 6 meters high at Lisbon, and 65 feet, which is 20 meters high at Cadiz, Spain. The waves travel westward to Martinique in the Caribbean, a distance of 3,790 miles or 6,100 kilometers in 10 hours, and they reach a height of 13 feet, four, which is 4 meters above mean sea level. Damage was even reported in Algiers, which is called Algeria today which is 685 miles to the east. The total number of persons killed include those who perished by drowning and in fires that burned through Lisbon for about six days following the shock. Depictions of the earthquake in art and literature continue for centuries, making the Great Lisbon Earthquake as it is came to known a seminal event in European history. So this great earthquake that the Bible had prophesied, it takes place 1755 in Lisbon, Portugal. If you look at this earthquake, there is hardly any earthquake in history, as a matter of fact. Looking back in history, I've not found any earthquake that has made the impact that the 1755 Lisbon earthquake made. This earthquake was transcontinental. 
This earthquake was felt in the Caribbean, just like it mentioned here, it was felt in Asia. And of course, it was felt almost all of Europe, right? So this was the greatest earthquake ever in human history. And it was prophesied to take place right down to the time of the ending of the papal persecution. And just like the Bible had predicted, it comes to fruition. Let's continue on. 25 years later would be the fulfillment of the other side of the prophecy. And the other side of the prophecy says that the sun would be darkened. Right? And you can see on your screen, May 19, 1780. It was this day that the other side of the prophecy would come to fruition. This time, this phenomenon will take place, not in Europe, but it would take place in somewhere where the Church of God was being widely developed and accepted, the United States of America. This article coming from AmericanHeritage.com, right, you can see there, it states this, the dark day of 1780. It says at dawn on Friday, May 19, 1780, farmers in New England stopped to marvel at the harmonious pink hue of the sun. By noon, the sky had darkened to midnight blackness, causing Americans still in the throes of a protracted war of independence to light candles and tremble at thoughts of the last thoughts of the last judgment. As the birds quieted and no storm accompanied the darkness, men and women crowded into churches where one minister commented that the people were very attentive. John Greenlaw Whittier later wrote, Men prayed and women wept. All ears grew sharp to hear the doom blast of the trumpet shattered the black sky. So, May 19, 1780, those who experienced this event thought it was going to be the last day on earth. They thought that Christ was coming back. And you would understand why, because remember, we just look at the sixth seal, right? We just look at Matthew 24, 29, and 30. It does state that in the last days that these events would have taken place, right? And so these people living May 19, 1780, they see the rapid, the swift fulfillment of the second coming of Christ. They thought Christ was coming weekly, right? And this is the, the kind of message that we're going to get when we finish um, studying this tonight. Now, I want to look at a second witness concerning um, the events of May 19, 1780. The source that I just looked at a while ago was a, was a secular source. If I read down to the bottom, I recognize that that source, not a believer in Christ, right? Now, this source that I'm going to look at, right, is more of a religious source. But this religious source, right, also <coughs> takes its quotations about the dark day from secular accounts. Now, I'm going to be reading from the book, The Great Controversy by Ellen White and it's a chapter 17 heralds of the morning all right right here it says almost if not altogether alone as the most mysterious and as yet unexplained phenomenon of its kind stands the dark day of May 19 1780 a most unaccountably darkening of the whole visible events and atmosphere in New England and that's from R.M. Devens, Our First Century, page 89. 
You know what's so interesting about this? What's very interesting about this is that it was 1776 that the American country was pretty much gaining its independence right from 1776 and this was like four years uh, after 1776 and it, these were the events that were taking place right now this and how dark this was <laughs> it says this an eyewitness an eyewitness living in massachusetts describes the event as follows in the morning the sun rose clear but was soon overcast the clouds became lowering and from them black and harmonious as they soon appeared lightning flash thunder roll and a light rain fell toward nine o'clock the clouds became thinner and assumed a brassy or coppery appearance and earth rocks trees buildings waters and persons were changed by this strange and earthly light a few minutes later a every black cloud spread over the entire sky except a narrow rim at the horizon as it usually is at nine o'clock on a summer evening fear anxiety and awe gradually filled the minds of the people women stood at the door looking out onto the dark landscape men returned from their labor in the field the carpenter left his tool the blacksmith his forge the tradesman his counter schools were dismissed and trembling the children fled homeward travelers put up the nearest farmhouse what is coming queried every lip and art it seemed as if a hurricane was about to dash across the land or as it was the day of the consummation of all things candles were used and earth fires shone as bright as on a moonless evening in autumn falls retired to their roofs and went to sleep kettles gathered at the pasture bars and low frogs peep birds sung their evening songs and bats flew about but the human knew that night had not come right this was what was happening you can just imagine right the terror that was on person's face what was going on nothing like this according to history has not happened Right. Nothing like this, according to the Bible account, has not happened since the time of Moses. Now, going forward, let's look at the portion, the falling of the stars. You know, to a great extent, stars falling today, right, doesn't have much significance to us because we hear of stars falling all the time. But in those times, right, and going back, these things were like rare occurrences. Right now, look at let's look at the portion. Let's look at the portion, the stars falling. Right, this portion of the prophecy of the stars falling was fulfilled in 1833. Right? So that was 53 years after the dark, the dark day. Right, and we're gonna read again from another source, right, about the falling of the stars. So we're seeing, or we should be seeing by now, that everything that the Bible prophesied under the sixth seal is coming to fruition. I'm gonna be reading from ancestry.com, right, and it's entitled The Night the stars fell right let us go it says right here this is a short reading it said though meteor showers are common no one predicted 
the explosion of shooting stars that illuminate the sky on November 12, 1833. Just before dawn, people threw on clothes and gather in roads and fields to watch the 150,000 meteors, about 30 per second, dance in plain view. In plain view during the storm peak. One eyewitness told the Pentagraph newspaper in Illinois that the very events seemed to be ablaze. Though many were spellbound, not all rejoiced in the cosmic celebration. At the time, the South was a hotbed for the national religious revival known as the Second Great Awakening. Some awake terrified, fearing it was the end of days as predicted by a Bible verse, and the stars of heaven shall fall. But in the weeks following, newspapers dem demystify the showers um, with science. Right? So you understand, right? And I want to pick up a bit on the phrase, the second great awakening, because from 1755 around to 1844, there was a great religious awakening that was taking place. That was taking place in the United States of America. Right? And the dark day of May 19, 1780. Right? And the meteor shower of stars falling November 12, 1833. These were two signs that were fueling the great awakening and people were teaching that Christ was gonna come again not so long from now and one particular person William Miller right and a group of persons called Adventist and the word Adventist mean one who is looking for the second coming right or Advent mean the coming of so the Advent movement Right, of which William Miller was a, was a great part, they teach, right, and they were preaching, right, that Jesus Christ was going to come again, 1844, right? And of course, in history, we know, we know that Christ did not come in 1844, but these signs, according to the Bible, was to come directly before the second coming of Christ. And so this is why they were teaching that Christ was coming again in 1844 right according to what we just looked at a while ago and according to what the scripture states we are really living on borrowed time right because it has been 189 years since the last event of revelation 6 12 and 13 the last event of the sixth seal that was to take place just before the second coming of Christ and so we are living on borrowed time from 1833 until now humanity have been living out just one verse of scripture we are living between Revelation 6 verse 13 and Revelation 6 verse 14 in Revelation 6 verse 14 it tells us that Christ put in his appearance Revelation 6 verse 13 it tells us that the stars fall from heaven and so from 1833 until now we are living between one verse that's so so what that so what that mean is we are living in the last days of course we just mentioned a while ago that Revelation 6 14 to 17 tells us the next great event will be Jesus second coming Revelation 6 verse 14 states and the heaven depart as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places verse 15 states and the kings of the earth and the great men 
and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bad man, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountain. I want to stop a bit. It says that in verse 15, that those who are lost will be wailing. And it starts from the kings, those in authority, the great men, the rich men, the chief captains, the mighty men, bandmen, freemen. All of them, it says, hid themselves in the rocks of the mountain. Verse 15 is telling us that there will be a revival of slavery. And there has been a revival of slavery in the world. Right, because bandman will be there. And bandman will be running to the rocks and the mountain. And also freeman will be there. So you can just look for a revival of slavery. Right? In the future, in the in the time to come. Let's go. Revelation 6:16. Let us know. And said to the mountains and rock. Fall on us and hid us from the face of him that seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. You can just imagine people running from a Lamb. Can you imagine it? You see a, a, a Lamb and running from the Lamb. But of course, we're not talking about the lamb out there in the field we're talking about the lamb christ jesus who was killed for us but because persons would have rejected the sacrifice they would have rejected the meek christ the lowly christ when christ put in his appearance as a conquering king they would have known that they are on the side of satan the dragon and so they would be very fearful right of the one who was supposed to be their savior revelation 6 17 let us know for the great day of his wrath is come and whom shall be able to stop now this is the question that we are going to look at in our next study because there will be a part two to the sixth seal and in part two we look at some events that would take place under the sixth seal right in the last days just before christ put in his appearance and so that will be a very interesting study right and uh, i hope no one would miss i hope no one will miss that study because there are events that are taking place in the time that we're living right that would make your ear stand on him and so you don't want to miss it and so in our next study we'll look at the sixth seal only in part two right and so as always john chapter 8 let us know that when we know the truth the truth will make us free and so from now until and next time god be with you and be blessed